Uh, good afternoon, I am Ajit. Uh, I'll be spe speaking on ICU pharmacology, uh, the drugs other than uh, antimicrobials that has been taken already. Uh, that has been taken already. So, uh, uh, starting with IV fluids, uh, the first uh, uh, obviously divided into crystalloids and colloids. Uh, crystalloids, the most commonly used crystalloids are uh, normal saline or also known as physiological saline. Uh, uh, it has a, uh, 154 milliequivalents of sodium, then 154 milliequivalents of chloride. It does not have any other electrolytes and no buffers. The pH is 5.7 uh, acidic and the osmolarity is 308 that is hyperosmolar. Then coming to the Ringer's lactate, uh, it, is more, uh, it is more nearer to plasma. The sodium concentration is 130, chloride is 109. Uh, it has pot uh, potassium and calcium that is 4 and 3 subsequently. Uh, then the buffers are lactate uh, which is uh, converted into bicarbonate in uh, liver. Uh, the pH is 6.5 again acidic and it is isosmolar to plasma with plasma. Then coming to Ringer's lactate which is also uh, available as steofundine. Uh, the sodium concentration is uh, again near to plasma 131, the chloride is 109. Uh, then the potassium and uh, calcium are uh, same as ringer selected. It has uh, acetate uh, 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 that is 28 milliequivalents. The pH is 6.7 and it is also small, uh, isosmolar. Then coming to normal saline, that is, uh, these are balanced uh, crystalloids. Uh, uh, they are available uh, with us as plasmalite and cabilite. The sodium concentration is 140, the chloride is 98. Potassium in plasma light uh, is 5, uh, it is same in uh, cabilite also. The magnesium differs in both, plasma light it is 3 and cabilite it is 1.5. Uh, as buffer it contains acetate and gluconate. The pH is almost similar to uh, our plasma and it is isosmolar. Then a few lines about balance solutions that I have already told. Uh, it is, these are isotonic solutions. Uh, available as plasma light and cabilite, uh, the ionic concentration of, uh, of sodium is 140, uh, potassium is 5, then magnesium is 3 which is uh, uh, which is 1.5 in cabilite, then chloride is 98 milliequivalents, uh, then it contains acetate and gluconate, the osmolarity is isosmolar. It is generally all these crystalloids are used as resuscitation and maintenance fluids as per uh, surviving sepsis guidelines. Uh, they say they recommend use of crystalloids rather than colloids for resuscitation. Uh, this is how they look like. Then coming to the next step, 3% NS, also known as hypertonic, hypertonic saline. Uh, one liter contains 513 milliequivalents of sodium and chloride. Then osmolarity is 1027. It is hyperosmolar. Can be given by, by, by a peripheral line, but ideally should be given through central line. It can cause thrombophlebitis. Then indications are. Uh, rapid correction of symptomatic hyponatremia. If the patient is drowsy or having seizures, then and then only you should start 3% NS. Then the correction cannot be more than uh, 10 to 12 milliequivalents uh, in 24 hours. Then uh, the second indi indication is the treatment of raised ICP. Can be in ALF or can be in a patient of uh, 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 traumatic brain injury also. Then uh, coming to uh, vasopressin receptor antagonists, also known as weptans or aquaretics. Uh, it is available as uh, a selective weptan and a non-selective weptan. Uh, selective weptan is V2, uh, it blocks the V2R receptors. Uh, available as tall weptan as a tablet, uh, popularly in trice. Mode of action is by blocking V2 receptors in kidneys. V2 receptor antagonism prevents recruitment of aquaporin ch water channels. That promotes the uh, uh, electrolyte free water, uh, free water excretion, and hence they are known as aquaretics. Then the dose is tolveptan. You have to start it slowly with a dose of 15 mgOD. Then you can increase up to 60 mgOD. Then conveptan. It is available. IV. Loading dose is 20 mg infused over 30 minutes. Then continuous infusion 20 mg over 24 hours. The maximum dose that can be given is 40 mg per day. It is uh, indicated only in euvolumic hyponatremia and hypervolumic hyponatremia should not be given in hyp uh, uh, hypervolumic hyponatremia should not be given in hypovolumic hyponatremia. Uh, what is the difference between an aquaretic and a diuretic for, it, for its function? It increases free water excretion more than the diuretics and it does not increase the uh, uh, sodium excretion nor does it uh, activate the RAS system. 
So coming to the next step, 50% dextrose, non-pyrogenic hypertonic saline, saline osmolarity is 2523. Uh, it contains 50 grams in 100 ml. Uh, uh, 100 ml contains 170 kilocalories. The indications are uh, it to treat symptomatic hypoglycemia. Uh, the second one is a famous GI drip uh, in treatment of hyperkalemia. Then prevention of hypoglycemia in ALF or sepsis wherever you have uh, symptomatic hypoglycemia. Then coming to HES, heta starch or hydroxyethyl starch. Uh, 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 HES is 6% hydroxyethyl starch 30 by 0.4. Uh, the percentage uh, denotes the concentration that is gram per 100 ml. Then 130 is the mole molecular weight in kilo deltans. Then 0.4 is the degree of molecular substitution that is what proportion of glucose units of the starch molecule uh, have been modified with hydro uh, hydroxyethyl starch uh, units. Then it is a colloid obviously. Indications are volume expansion. These are seldom used in ICUs these days other than a desperate attempt in case of hemorrhagic uh, shock. Uh, we do not use uh, HES these days. As per the uh, surviving sepsis campaign document also, they uh, have ruled against HES uh, and it is a strong recommendation and a strong quality of evidence. Uh, the dose which you can give if you are giving is uh, at the max 30 ml, 33 ml per kg per day. As the side effects are renal dysfunction, alteration in coagulation parameters and fluid overload. Uh, so what are the uh, contraindications? It should not be used in critically ill patients that I have already told you. Then uh, including those, of those with sepsis, it is to be avoided in a patients with pre-existing like pre renal diseases. Not to be used in a patient with liver dysfunction. There have been three clinical trials, uh, chest trial, biceps trials. Chest trial and biceps trial, they said uh, mortality uh, does not increase uh, if you use either crystalloids or HES. But renal dysfunction is proportionately more in uh, patients who have been treated with HES. 6S was the only trial that showed 90 days mortality is increased if you use HES. Uh, coming to the next trial, Manitol, uh, it is a white crystalline solid, tastes and smells like sucrose known as osmotic diuretic. It is available in India with us as 20% solution. Outside it is available as 4%, 5% solutions also. Indication is treatment of cerebral edema. Generally 0.5 to 1 grams of uh, per kg is given. Uh, it, also, it is also used in uh, increased intraocular tension to promote diuresis and toxic injections like salicylates, barbiturates and lithium and anti-hemolytics in, uh, as an as a anti-hemolytic in QRP syndromes. Then mode of action is it elevates blood plasma osmolality resulting in enhanced flow of water from the tissue into the interstitial fluid and plasma. Half life is almost 3 hours, 3 to 4 hours. The onset of osmotic diuresis is 15 minutes and it lasts for 3 to 8 hours. Uh, contraindication obviously it increases, uh, it, it causes the expansion of intravascular volume so patient might end up in pulmonary edema. If there is a patient of CHF you should refrain from giving it. If there is a patient of renal failure you should refrain from giving it. Uh, uh, then in active intracranial bleed, uh, generally it should be used with caution. What we have learnt is if there is a disruption in uh, blood brain barrier, it can cause a rebound uh, intracerebral hypertension. The second is uh, acute uh, EDH, where the, uh, the bleed is arterial most of the times. When once you are, you are giving it in a patient who is old frail, whose uh, your, uh, your brain is shrunken, if you give it, the brain again shrinks and the, uh, your uh, clot gets dislodged and patient might end up with, with a severe intracranial bleed. And you have to monitor osmolarity. If it exceeds more than 320, stop it. Coming to the next one, uh, three chamber TPN, it contains amino acids, lipids, glucose and electrolytes. All are, se uh, all are in separate chambers. Uh, these are uh, these are uh, supplied as a partition because once you mix them, they are uh, these are not stable. So it is to be used in 24 hours. If you uh, 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 if it is more than 24 hours, you will have to discard it, whether you have used it or not. The indications are if the GI tract is not functional, as per surviving sepsis campaign document, uh, you should not use uh, uh, your uh, TPN with or without, uh, you should not use TPN as adjunct or only uh, your uh, nutrition till, to, uh, till 7 days 
the indica the other indication is uh, if the patient is already malnourished and patient has landed up to you in sepsis and the gi tract is not functional so in those cases after, uh, and uh, after starting your uh, uh, after starting your gi uh, uh, your enteral nutrition if the calorie intake is less than 50% you can supplement it but it is uh, not uh, not a not a recommendation by uh, any surviving sepsis campaign uh, this is a practice based guideline then precaution is obviously uh, it is a 1.5 uh, 1 liter bag so in case of oliguric oliguric renal failure patient might lead uh, patient might end up in uh, hypervolemia then uh, in case of severe hepatic failure the metabolism is deranged uh, patient uh, the LFTs might get further deranged, then it can cause hypertriglyceridemia. Uh, monitoring will be uh, LFTs and triglycerides should be monitored twice weekly for first, for first week, then weekly. And blood glucose early for first four hours, followed by fourth hourly for day one, and then thrice daily. Uh, as soon as we start feeding, uh, then hyper, hypophosphatemia results. Uh, so the phos uh, phosphorus is to be done before starting it at the start and then once weekly. Then omega-3 fatty acid, if you look at surviving sepsis campaign document 2016, they have ruled against omega-3 fatty acids for the sake of completion. It is a fatty acid emulsion rich in omega-3 fatty acids. The to total calories are 112 kilocalories per 100 ml. The daily dose is up to 1 to 2 ml per kg. It con constitutes 10 to 20 percent of daily lipid requirements. The indications uh, earlier were severe, uh, severe ARDS, post-surgical, post-trauma and patient in IBD in ICU. Contraindications are severe liver or the renal function and intolerance to lipids. Then coming to amino acid so, uh, solutions, the amino acid infusion are seldom given alone. These are given along with uh, either parenteral or enteral nutrition in a case in cases which have uh, earlier, uh, uh, which are already malnourished before the admission. Then uh, various concentrations are available. Mostly 10% is used. The total amino acids. Uh, are 100 grams per liter. The total nitrogen is 16.2 grams per liter. The dose is 16 to 20 ml per kg per day, which is equivalent to 0.8 to 1 grams per kg amino acids. That is the daily requirement. Uh, then it, it sh uh, should be used uh, preferably by center line, but can be used through uh, peri uh, peripheral line also. Uh, then coming to the uh, uh, to another colloid, 20% albumin. It is man manufactured from human plasma by fractionation and heat treated. It is a clite, uh, it is a clear, slightly viscous, yellowish color uh, fluid. 20% weight by volume, half life in vivo is 19 days, and the turnover in adult is 15 grams per day. Uh, there have been two clinical trials, SAFE and LBOs. So, SAFE study said there is no uh, mortality benefit. Uh, if you use albumin, uh, they used 4% albumin in SAFE trial. Uh, in LBO, LBO trial, they did, do not use, they did not use uh, albumin as a, as a resuscitation fluid. They used uh, to maintain a, a, a albumin, plasma albumin level of 3. So, uh, both of the studies, they did not find any mortality benefit. There was only a particular subset of septic shock. Uh, where uh, they, it had a mortality benefit of uh, around 6.5%. So indications are a few in ICU during large volume paracentesis, that is large volume means more than 5 liters to prevent central volume depletion. Uh, for every liter drained, you have to supplement 8 grams of albumin. So roughly if, a, if it is a case, if it is a patient of uh, 50 kgs or 100 kgs, you will have to give uh, 1 to 1.5. Then spontaneous, uh, to, in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis to prevent hepatorenal syndrome. Uh, generally on day one, uh, prophylactically, uh, prophylactically it is given 1.5 milligrams uh, per kg. Uh, on, that, on day three, one, uh, uh, one gram per kg. It was, it was uh, gram per kg. Then in hepatorenal syndromes, then plasma exchange in Mars, which is practically albumin dialysis. Uh, coming to the next drug, KCL. Uh, KCL is uh, uh, quite widely used. 1 ml contains 2 mL equivalents to be used preferably via center line. It causes pain uh, whenever you give through peripheral lines. Uh, 
so it is to be diluted if you are if you are giving through a peripheral line maximum dose is 20 milliequivalents per hour through a peripheral line and 40 milliequivalents per hour through center line but it has a theoretical possibility of uh, causing uh, cardiac arrhythmias since you are directly supplying uh, such high dose of uh, potassium uh, directly into the heart uh, though it never occurs the indication is to correct uh, hypokalemia the side effects are intense pain when administered through peripheral line so diluted you will have to measure uh, uh, serum uh, potassium concentration especially if the patient is in renal failure or has AKI because in those cases potassium can rise precipitously then coming to the next uh, 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 drug sodium bicarbonate it is available in two forms in India outside it is available in many forms uh, sodium bicarbonate 8.4 percent and 7.5 percent it's a hypertonic solution concentration it's uh, available outside are 4.25 7.5 8.5 weight by volume uh, also uh, if you are treating a patient uh, who is having metabolic acidosis uh, they mention one more uh, carbicarb which is a uh, one is to one combination of sodium bicarb and disodium uh, bicarbonate which uh, produces less of pco2 so those patients who are also already in type 2 respiratory failure uh, it is good for them it is not available in with us then mode of action is it increases plasma bicarbonate uh, buffers excess of h positive ions raises blood ph the indications are correction of metabolic acidosis uh, salicylate poisoning in salicylate poisoning it neutralizes the acidic uh, compounds in tca overdose it uh, stabilizes the myocardium if the uh, your qt interval is more than 10 100 milliseconds you will have to uh, start using it prophylactically then in methanol poisoning in methanol poisoning it is uh, used to correct uh, acidosis that's all side effects are crystallization of venous line after administration and hypernatremia obviously then coming to calcium, calcium is available with us in, uh, as, a cal as calcium gluconate and calcium chloride. Both are available in 10% weight by volume. Elemental calcium in calcium chloride is three times that of calcium gluconate. Uh, calcium chloride is two uh, the, uh, 273 and in calcium gluconate it is 93. The indications are hypocalcemic tightening in hyperkalemia as a membrane stabilizer. It is a physiological antagonist of uh, potassium. Then hypocalcemia due to hypoparathyroidism. Magnesium sulfate overdose and uh, black widow spider rights that we have not heard in this part of country. Then uh, uh, we'll have to look for the interactions also. If you are giving a patient, if the patient is on digoxin, which uh, the patients are rarely nowadays on uh, uh, on uh, these uh, digoxin and all, they are not used nowadays more uh, uh, in uh, critical care. It can cause systolic arrest then concurrent use with neuromuscular blocking agents if you are using them it can cause reversal then precautions propensity to cause hypercalcemia so it is to be monitored continuously then given an infusion or slow IV push generally it's a give, it's given in as an infusion or slow IV push if you are using an IV push you should uh, dilute it and only uh, calcium gluconate should be given not calcium chloride then coming to magnesium sulfate it is available to us in 25% and 50% weight by volume, 1 ml contains uh, 500 mg of ma magnesium sulfate that is equivalent to 4 milliequivalents of uh, magnesium. Indications are preeclampsia and eclampsia, then hypomagnesemia, then correction of hypokalemia, uh, followed by uh, torsad dipontis, uh, where it is, uh, 1 to 2 grams is used over 1 to 2 minutes. Then coming to insulin, uh, uh, which is uh, regular insulin, generally we use regular insulin in ICUs. Uh, regular insulin contains 40 units of uh, insulin uh, in one ml. Mode of action is it lowers blood glucose by stimulating peripheral glucose intake, intake especially muscle and fat, and then uh, and by inhibiting the hepatic glu glucose production. The indications are diabetes mellitus, diabetic ketoacidosis, then hyperglycemia in ICU as a part of anti-hyperkalemic regime, our famous GI drip. Uh, generally, for every 2.5 uh, grams of uh, dextrose or glucose you use one unit of insulin then the clinical trials uh, it started uh, there have been four clinical trials uh, mainly uh, when starting from the Windenburg uh, it was first done in uh, intensive insulin therapy in uh, surgical patients critical ill patients then followed by uh, where they, fo they found intensive insulin therapy was useful it had a 
a survival benefit then uh, intensive insulin therapy in medical patients was done followed by viceps and high sugar trial where they found there was no mortality benefit and uh, the episodes of hypoglycemia were more in intensive insulin group so uh, surviving sepsis campaign people uh, they advise a target of 180 less than 180 uh, then coming to propofol uh, it's a sedative hypnotic 10 mg per ml concentration with white oil in water emulsion also contains soybean oil glycerol egg lecithin 1 ml contains 1.1 kilocalories the indication is sedatives in icu and part of anesthesia in ot the propofol uh, it's it, it has a rapid onset of action 40 seconds one arm brain circulation time uh, short acting rapidly uh, crosses the blood brain barrier it is highly protein bound mainly the uh, uh, metabolism is hepatic and clearances from renal the hemodynamic effects are hypotension and bradycardia if boluses are given uh, respiratory effects is depression of respiration several effects are decreases cerebral blood flow uh, metabolism cmro2 then it decreases the icp other effects are it uh, decreases the intracellular pressure then uh, a definitive mention should be done for uh, propofol related infusion syndrome it is defined as severe bradycardia combined with lipemia severe metabolic acidosis which is defined as base excess more than uh, minus 10 uh, with rhabdomyolysis or myoglobinuria associated with continuous infusion of propofol uh, first is it was reported in children uh, uh, with a, uh, which were infused with a dose of more than 4 mg per kg per hour for more than 48 hours after that, uh, it has been reported in many cases in adults too, but in uh, severe, uh, in uh, elderly patients mainly. Then coming to thiopentone, it has a rapid onset of action. Uh, it is a barbiturate anesthetic, play, ye pale yellow hygroscopic amorphous powder. Yellow color is due to the sulfur molecule. It acts on uh, GABA benzodiazepine receptors. It is a highly lipid soluble, highly protein bound. The prime site of metabolism is liver. The onset, onset is 30 to 40 seconds and the duration is 10 to 30, uh, 30 minutes. Uh, in ICU, generally, we seldom use uh, thiopentone other than uh, the management of uh, status epilepticus, which is refractory to all other treatments. Then sometimes in uh, refractory uh, refractory high icp uh, refractory high icp where we want to give barbiturate coma the contraindication is acute intermittent cough failure then coming to dexmedetomidine it is a central reacting alpha 2 agonist uh, which activates uh, g proteins in brain stem that leads to inhibition of norepinephrine release that causes sedation as well as analgesia half life is 6 minutes onset of bolus is 5 to 10 minutes, peak effect is 15 to 30 minutes, it is metabolized in liver. The indications are conscious sedation, definitely sedation of mechanical ventilated patient, sedation for the patient on NIV and if you are doing a procedure, patient has come from ward or somewhere. Then uh, the dose is the loading, do uh, loading with an infusion of 1 micrograms per kg over 10 minutes followed by 0.2 to 0.7 micrograms per kg per hour as a maintenance dose. One ampule contains 2 ml of 200 uh, that is equivalent to 200 micrograms the precaution is it causes slightly more hypotension and bradycardia with bolus doses there have been two trials prodex and midex uh, both for icts uh, both both for uh, rcts the results were dexmed was not inferior to midazolam or propofol in maintaining light to moderate sedation the dexmed reduces mechanically ventilated days compared to midazolam then dexmed improves uh, patient's ability to communicate pain compared to the to both agents and then dexmed is associated with more hypotension and bradycardia there are flaws in both these uh, trials but uh, that has been uh, uh, that has been directed to directed uh, in the earlier studies class so uh, the next drugs are uh, the next class of drugs is benzodiazepines these are sedative hypnotics they enhance effect of gaba and gaba receptors decreasing the excitatory neurons the indication is sedation in ICU treatment of scissors, anxiolytic agents, and alcohol withdrawal. If you uh, generally most commonly used benzodiazepines are uh, Librium, that is chlorodiazepine oxide, lorazepam, midazolam, and alprazolam. If you are treating a patient for delirium tremens uh, or alcohol withdrawal, uh, uh, first check for the LFTs. The reason being Librium is a long acting uh, benzodiazepine. The patient will be sedated for say 24 to 48 hours. Uh, these days, the choice of drug, uh, the choice of choice of treat, uh, treatment is lorazepam rather than your uh, closer, chlorodiazepoxide. 
Non set of action of midazolam is 2 to 5 minutes, the lorazepam is 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, overdose, uh, in case of overdose, you have to, uh, the flumazenil is the antidote, the dose is 0.2 mg over 15 seconds. Uh, flumazenil is very short acting, so if uh, the benzodiazepine overdose is that of a long acting, uh, this thing, uh, uh, long acting benzodiazepine, you will have to give, a, give flumazenil in infusion, it is not available in India. Then coming to the muscle relax relaxants, two categories, non-depolarizing and depolarizing. Non-depolarizing muscle relaxants, re relaxants act by competitively blocking the binding of acetylcholine to its receptors. There are three, uh, mainly three of them are used in ICUs, vecuronium, rocuronium and tracurium. Rocuronium is the fastest acting. Uh, we use it for RSI. Uh, the dose is 0.6 to 1.5 milligrams per kg. The second one which is most commonly used is atracurium. Uh, the time to onset is 2.5 to 3, million, 3 minutes and the duration is 4, 30 to 45. You have to maintain the cold chain, uh, otherwise it will be useless. Then the dose is 0 0.5, 0 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams per kg. Atracurium is metabolized by Hoffman degradation and ester hydrolysis. So it can be given in liver and renal failures. But in case of renal failure, you have to uh, monitor the patient because Laudanosin, a metabolite that gets accumulated in renal failure, that is a CNS stimulant that can cause scissors. Generally, these scissors are noted only in animal models, not in humans. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't witnessed it till now. Then the muscle relaxants, uh, the other classes, depolarizing muscle relax relaxants, act by binding to and activating acetylcholine receptors at first causing contraction, then paralysis. Scholine uh, is the, uh, the only one in the class. It is rapid. It has a rapid onset of action that is 30 seconds and short, short duration. So uh, it was the drug of choice for RSI. But in case a patient comes to ICU uh, right from the emergency, you do not know the renal status of the patient. You do not know the uh, potassium status of the patient. Then in those cases, you have to avoid succinylcholine. The other precautions are severe burns, in the, uh, severe burns and spinal cord injury. Wherein, where, where it, wherein after seven days it can cause uh, severe precipitate, uh, precipitating uh, hyperkalemia. Uh, these are the photographs. Then coming to fentanyl, it is a narcotic analgesic. Uh, one ampule is, uh, contains 2 ml, uh, that is 50 micrograms per ml. Mode of action, it binds to uh, stereospecific receptors at many sites within CNS. It increases brain pain threshold alters pain reception and inhibits ascending pain pathways. Onset is almost immediate given IV, indication is analgesia. Then coming to n acetyl system, uh, 200 mg per ml, indications are uh, mucolytic agent, uh, uh, then antidote of paracetamol overdose, both 72 hours regime and 24 hours regime is available with us. Uh, then prevention of CIN where it, it is as of now it has a questionable value. The only thing, the thing that has stood uh, test of time is your uh, hydration. Then coming to anti-epileptics, phenytoin, phosphenytoin and levetiracetam. Uh, phenytoin, uh, the mechanism of action is it stabilizes neuronal membranes and decreases seizure activity by increasing efflux or decreasing influx of sodium across uh, cell membranes. The onset is in, uh, in uh, half to one hour. The half-life is 7 to, uh, 7 to 40 hours. Serum, uh, it is, uh, its level are to be uh, maintained in a narrow therapeutic range, uh, otherwise uh, the scissors will be precipitated again. The therapeutic range is 10 to 20 uh, micrograms per ml. The phenytoin rate of administration should not exceed 50 milligram per minute. So a patient of status, if it comes to you, you cannot manage the patient alone with phenytoin because for the therapeutic ranges to be achieved, it takes a lot of time. Uh, the dose is 15 to 20 mg per kg. Side effects are uh, it can cause arrhythmias, hypotension, then uh, toxic hepatitis and leukopenia. In those cases where uh, you need to load the patient fast, you will have to give phosphenatoin. The rate of administration uh, is as fast as 150 mg per minute. The dose is one, uh, 50 to uh, 20 mg per kg phenytoin equivalent. Uh, phenytoin equivalent is uh, 1.5 milligram of phosphenytoin is equivalent to 1 milligram of your phenytoin. Then coming to levetiracetam, it is a pyrolidine class. Mechanism of action is it probably inhibits presynaptic calcium channels. The dose is generally the dose is 20 to 30. You can give up to 30 mg per kg followed by uh, 50 uh, mg BD that can be increased to 1 gram BD to TDS. Uh, 
this drug, uh, liver stem, it can cause cortical blindness. We have seen a patient of that. Then unfractionated heparin, potenti uh, it potentiates the action of antithrombin 3, inactivates thrombin, prevents conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. <laughs> Uh, onset of action is immediate subcutaneously uh, the action onset of action is 20 to 30 minutes half life is 2 hours generally we monitor aptt every fourth hourly uh, the uh, range is 50 to 70 for therapeutic heparinization to occur then the dose adjustment should be as per aptt normogram then the second one uh, low mel uh, the other one the low molecular weight heparins uh, two drugs are there uh, Inoxaparin and deltaparin commonly goes by the name of Klexin and Fregmin mode of action is it, is it binds to antithrombin and then inhibits the activity of factor 10. So you will have to monitor the anti-factor 10 activity uh, then advantages are less monitoring and less hemorrhage complications. Inoxaparin the dose is 1 mg per kg BD that is therapeutic and for prophylaxis 1 mg per kg OD. Uh, if your creatinine clearance is more than 30, you do not have to change the dose. If the creatinine clearance is less than 30, you have to decrease down the dose to half. Uh, in case of delta pairing, if the patient is having your renal impairment, uh, delta pairing is the drug of choice. You do not have to change the dose of uh, the uh, dose of the drug. Generally, what I have seen people is uh, doing is they straight away whenever there is a uh, your uh, renal dysfunction they straight away go and put the dose as 2500 international uni uh, units that is that should not be done 5000 is the dose then coming to fonda purinox extra binds to antithrombin 3 and causes selective inhibition of factor 10 a prophylactic dose is 2.5 mg subcutaneous od therapy uh, for therapy 5 mg for less than 50 kg weight 7.5 mg for 50 to 100 kg weight uh, 10 mg in case of uh, more than 100 kgs it is given subcutaneous od the, uh, in all those all these three classes of drugs the chances of hit are maximum with uh, unfractionated heparin then less with uh, low molecular weight heparin and uh, minimum with fondapurinox see uh, it is contraindicated if the creatinine clearance is less than 30 and it should be avoided it is not a contraindication it should be avoided in a patient with whose weight is less than 50 kgs then the indications of heparin, prophylaxis for DVT, treatment of DVT, treatment of pulmonary embolism, STMI, non-STMI, uh, non uh, then flushing of dialysis catheter, heparin lock for vascular catheters, which is uh, which have been aban abandoned now generally because of the risk of hit. Then coming to the vasopressors, the most common vasopressor used and as per uh, surviving sepsis, sepsis campaign document, it is the drug of choice. In case of septic shock, the vasopress uh, uh, it is available to us in a in one ml. Uh, one ampule contains two ml. Uh, that contains two mg of uh, noradrenaline base. Mode of action it is it stimulates alpha receptors, causing vaso uh, vasoconstriction. It increases systemic blood pressure. It also stimulates beta receptors, causing anotropia and increases the uh, increase in coronary blood flow. The dose is 0.04 to 0.4 micrograms per kg per minute. The indications are uh, definitely shock, hypotension, onset of action is very rapid, the duration is 1 to 2 minutes. So it is to be given in infusion. Then coming to the second one, adrenaline vasopressor, uh, vasopressor and uh, it's also a vasopressor and inotrope. One ampule contains 1 ml, uh, that is 1 mg. It stimulates, stimulates beta 2 receptors at small doses. Uh, then causes uh, uh, vasodilation and uh, bro uh, bronchial smooth muscle dilatation. As the dose increases, it stimulates beta 1 and then alpha receptors causing vasoconstriction. So the dose is almost the same, 0 0.04 to 0.4 mili uh, micrograms per kg per minute. The onset is almost immediate, subcutaneous, it is, uh, the onset of action is 5 to 10 minutes. ADR, ADR as per the ACLS guidelines, it is it, it is used in VT, VF, and uh, acetols. Then bradycardia un unresponsive to atropine pacing, where it is given in, in infusion. Then anaphylaxis, it is given both IV and uh, uh, your IM in different dilutions. Then coming to bron uh, bronchospasm, uh, there is something called a brittle asthma, where uh, you'll uh, it is not responsive to your conventional beta agonists and all. So you'll have to give uh, adrenaline. Then shock and hypotension, definitely yes, uh, as an adjunct to uh, your norepinephrine. Uh, norepine. Then coming to vasopressin, uh, aqueous solutions of synth synthetic vasopressin of posterior pituitary gland, uh, one ml contains 20 units, 
uh, mode of action is it increases CMP, which increases uh, water permeability at renal tubule, resulting in uh, low urine output, and it causes in uh, intense uh, vasoconstrictions of GI arterioles, and increases blood pressure, systemic vascular resistance, and decreases heart rate and cardiac output. The dose uh, is 0.01 to 0.04. Uh, surviving sepsis campaign says uh, 0 0.03 should be given. Then uh, indications are vasodilatory shock, diabetes in spiders, and to reduce portal pressures as an alternative to terlipressin if it is not available. Ideally, terlipressin should be given. The onset is within uh, less than within 15 minutes. The clinical trial is vast trial uh, that has been done that was done that said uh, both norepinephrine and uh, uh, vasopressin. Uh, both, both are efficaciously the same, uh, uh, none of them uh, increases or decreases the mortality. Then dopamine stimulates both adrenergic and dopaminergic, dopamine, dopaminergic receptors, 0.5 to 2 micrograms per kg per minute causes renal and mesenteric vasodilation. So people used to propagate it as a renal, do, uh, your, uh, renal dose of dopamine uh, which have been abundant now as per uh, your surviving sepsis campaign guidelines. Then 2 to, 2 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute, it acts on dopamine, dopaminergic and beta-1 agonist uh, uh, receptors. It causes chronotropy, it increases uh, heart rate and mesenteric vasodilation. Then at a dose of 10 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute, it causes vasoconstriction and rise in BP. One ampule contains 5 ml, that contains 200 mg. Uh, the onset of action is less than 5 minutes. The indications are bradycardia not responding to atropine and patient where, where it is given in infusion. Uh, then uh, vasodilatory shock, anotropic agents in advanced heart failure. The one trial which was uh, done was SOAP2 trial where the, they found uh, 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 that the mortality, it, uh, whether you use dopamine or nor norepinephrine, uh, is not changed by both of those, those, but a sub particular subset of patients which were having cardiogenic shock, those had uh, more, uh, more uh, episodes of tachyarrhythmias. So this is not the first choice of drug in case of septic shock, uh, norep norepinephrine is the one. We do not use it, uh, we seldom use it in our clinical practice. Other than if the patient is having bradycardia, symptomatic bradycardia, so we use it instead of dopamine nor norepinephrine. Then coming to dobutamine, it is an inotropic agent. Mechanism of action is it stimulates beta-1 uh, causing increased cardiac contractility in heart rate. One ampule contains 20 ml, uh, which is uh, equal to 250 mg. The dose is 2 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute. The onset is within 1 to 10 minutes. The indication is inotropic support in advanced heart failure. Generally a patient, uh, it also increases the heart rate. It causes further falling diastolic blood pressure. So a patient uh, who is having a low diastolic blood pressure, uh, this is actually not the drug of, th this should actually not uh, the drug of choice because the perfusion, it depends on your diastolic blood pressure. Then coming to terlipressin, it is an analog of vasopressin. Indications are bleeding esophageal varices, type 1 HRS, then uh, septic shock, the dose is 2 to 12 mg per day. Generally it is prescribed as uh, 1 mg 4th hourly that can be increased to 2 to 3 mg 4th hourly. 1 ampule contains 10 ml uh, that is equal, uh, that is that contains 1 milligram. Mode of action is same as vasopressin except they reduce the blood flow in splenchnic area which follows reduction in hepatic blood flow and thus portal blood pressure. Side effects are hypertension, uh, abdominal colic, diarrhea, then skin ulceration and heart failure. Uh, whenever you are planning to start terlipressin in some patients, first go and check the uh, cardiac status of the patient. Then you will have to monitor for lactates, pain abdomen and, di uh, and diarrhea because it can cause mesentic ischemia and heart failures. So uh, uh, if uh, uh, in case of terlipressin, uh, you will have to decrease down the dose if uh, your uh, lactates are increasing or the patient is uh, uh, patient is heading towards the uh, cardiac failure or you will have to start somatostatin or some other drug. Right, uh, coming to NTG, mode of action is relaxation of vascular smooth muscles and dilatation of veins and arteries. Veins more than arteries actually, it causes uh, peripheral pooling of the blood and decreases the venous return, so preload is decreased. It also causes it arterior, uh, arterial dil dil relaxation that reduces SVR, so afterload is also decreased. It dilates the coronary arteries. So the uh, 
classical indications are hypertensive crisis uh, then control of chf in acute mi then the treatment of angina pectoris contraindications are uh, those conditions where cardiac output is dependent on, on vascular resistance such as pericardial tamponade, restrictive cardiomyopathy and anterior wall MI. One ampule contains 5 ml that is 25 mg. The dose is 5 micrograms per minute. You can increase the dose every 3 to 5 minutes by 5 micrograms per minute uh, up to a maximum of 20, uh, 20 micrograms per minute. Side effect is whenever you start it, patient will start uh, complaining of uh, headache, then tachycardia and hypotension which are rebound phenomena. Then uh, sodium nitroproside mode, uh, mechanism of action is causes peri peripheral vasodilation by direct action on venous and arterial smooth muscles thus reducing peripheral resistance. Increases cardiac output by decreasing arterial uh, afterload, reduces aortal and uh, left ventricular impedance. The onset of action is less than 2 minutes. It is a photosensitive drug. so. Uh, should be covered and should be placed in uh, should be stored in dark places the dose is 3 to 4 micrograms per kg per minute not to exceed 10 micrograms per kg per minute the indication is hypertensive urgencies and emergencies then coming to atropine atropine is an anticholinergic drug uh, mechanism of action is it blocks action of acetylcholine at parasympathetic sites in smooth muscles creatine glands and cns the onset of action is almost immediate half life is 2 to 3 hours one ampule contains 1 ml uh, that contains 0.6 mg. I have also seen 1 mg when I was working working in Rotak. One ampule contains 1 mg. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Then indications are uh, hemodynamically significant bradycardia as a part of reversal of uh, neuromuscular blockade. Uh, this uh, reversal of neuromuscular blockade. Uh, Generally, it is done in only pediatric anesthesia. Uh, anesthesia, not in. We have not uh, not practiced it in uh, practiced it in uh, adult patients. Then one definitive indication is uh, OP or carbamate poisoning, where it is an antidote. Then coming to amiodarone, it is a wide spectrum antiarrhythmic, uh, basically a class three antiarrhythmic, but it has class one, class two, and class three uh, uh, your uh, actions. Uh, as, uh, as when it uh, blo uh, as class one, it blocks sodium channels at fast pacing fre frequencies. As class two, it is non-competitive anti-sympathetic. Uh, it causes non-competitive anti-sympathetic blockage. Then, as class three, it lengthens cardiac action potential, prolongs refractory period, and decreases AV conduction and sinus node dysfunction. One ampule contains three ml, uh, which is which has 150 mg. Onset is rapid. You'll have to give it slow. Metabolism is hepatic. You will have to give it over 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, it can cause hypotension. That uh, dose is 150 mg IV loading over 10 to uh, 10 to 15 minutes. You can repeat it. Then uh, after that, 1 mg per kg per minute uh, for next six over next six hours, uh, followed by 0.5 mg per kg per minute over next 18 hours. After first 28 hours, 72 mg over 24 hours. Uh, 24 hours. The uh, we we we'll have to monitor QTC interval because it can cause ventricular tachycardia uh, and bradycardia. Then amiodarone, the indications are ventricular arrhythmias. Side effect is bradycardia, pulmonary fibrosis. If you are using it uh, long term, uh, in cases of uh, your arrhythmias where the patient is on oral amiodarone, then liver dysfunction, then hypo and hypothyroid, hypo and hyperthyroidism. Uh, that if you remember wolf charicos effect and then the maximum daily dose is 2.1 uh, grams uh, in 24 hours. Then coming to the second one, uh, antiarrhythmic del uh, deltaism. Uh, it is an anti-anginal calcium channel blocker. It inhibits extracellular calcium ion influx across the membranes of myocardial cells and vas vascular smooth muscles resulting in inhibition of cardiac and vascular smooth muscles. The onset is uh, rapid, IV uh, within 3 minutes, metabolism is hepatic, 1 ampule contains 5 ml which is, which is equal to 25 mg, the dose is 10 to 20 mg over 10 minutes. The indications are anti, uh, uh, arrhythmias and hypertension. We do we seldom give, give it for as an anti-hypertensive, but yes, anti-arrhythmic for rate control, Dilzem should be the double choice. Then coming to adenosine, it is, uh, it is uh, another anti-arrhythmic. The indications are it can uh, it, for the conversion of conversion to sinus rhythm of PSVT as uh, guided by ACLS guidelines. One ampule contains two ml, which is equal to six mg. 
it should be stored at room temperature it should not be refrigerated refrigerated as the crystallization occurs before you use it look for uh, the color uh, it should be clear fluid otherwise uh, there is no use of giving a token uh, that should be discarded then the mechanism mechanism of action is it depresses s uh, and av nodes it antagonizes cmp mediated uh, catecholine stimulation of ventricular muscles then it has a direct action on uh, specific cell membrane receptors a1 and a2 then the onset of action is 10 seconds the duration is 10 seconds the metabolism it is absorbed by rbcs and endothelium elimination half life is 10 seconds so you have to give it by iv flush given as a rapid bolus by peripheral iv route it should be given as close to the patient as possible recommendations are initial dose as per acls guidelines 6 mg as a rapid iv bolus administered over 1 to 2 seconds pe second period rapid and uh, repeat administration 12 mg uh, should be done uh, should can be given as rapid iv bolus which can be repeated then coming to metoprolol selective beta 1 selective blocker mode of action is reduction in heart rate and cardiac output reduction of systolic blood pressure upon exercise it inhibits the isoprotenol uh, proteinolol induced tachycardia reduction of reflex orthostatic tachycardia one one ml contains 5 ml that contains 5 mg so the indications are angina atrial fibrillation supraventricular tachycardia hypertension myocardial infarction and thyrotoxicosis onset is over 5 to uh, 5 to 10 minutes half life is 3 to 4 hours then another anti arrhythmic xylocard uh, comes by the name of lignocaine anti arrhythmic uh, uh, the mechanism of action is blocks the sodium channels in the cell membrane of heart ventricular excitability is depressed and stimulation threshold of, of ventricle is increased half life is 10 to 15 minutes indication is cardiac arrhythmias and status epilepticus uh, it's a uh, then the dose is 50 to 100 mi, uh, mg over 2 minutes followed by infusion of 2 to 4 mg per minute then coming to another drug ivabradin uh, ivabradin primary mechanism of action is on cardiac tissue on sa node it inhibits uh, funny it's a it's a funny channel inhibitor it increases the duration of diastole without altering other phases, phases of action potential uh, it was first approved by FDA in 2015, used in the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction as it does not target neurohumoral system. The most common cardiac, uh, cardiovascular side effect is bradycardia and in 15% of the cases it, ha uh, it has been seen to increase uh, the chances of atrial fibrillation. It is used in the treatment of inappropriate sinus tachycardia but uh, for in inappropriate sinus tachycardia it is not a FDA approved uh, indication. Thank you, sir.